Hi, and welcome back uh, to my channel. So in this video, I want to answer some of the questions I received from uh, some of the viewers. And so this uh, question was basically the following. What is the difference between uh, the HRF and the PortaPak uh, extension? Uh, what about Havoc, the firmware uh, working on the PortaPak? What you can do with the PortaPak? And should I buy a PortaPak or should I instead buy just the HRF? So in this video, I will try to answer these questions. So uh, at the moment, you, you're seeing uh, uh, the HRF with the porta pack uh, board on top of it, and it's uh, plugged with uh, just an external battery, okay? This little thing here. So as you can see, uh, it's a device that works uh, perfectly fine without the need of a computer, okay? It's an independent device, it's just uh, like an iPod or, or just like uh, a walkie-talkie, like this Baofeng that we will use later for demonstration. It's just something that doesn't need a computer, okay? Now I'm instead uh, turning off uh, the battery, okay? Instead, uh, the HRF, uh, as I already illustrated on a one of my previous videos called HRF1 versus uh, Chinese copies, is this board that you can see here. And this board cannot be used uh, without uh, a computer because it does nothing, it does not have a human uh, interface, right? So to use this board, uh, you need uh, uh, to connect a computer uh, to the uh, USB port that you have here. Now, to explain what the HRF is uh, and what is the, therefore the difference with the porta pack, which was one of the questions, I want to try to explain it in a very uh, conceptual way, so without entering any details, but in a sense, uh, the HRF, so this board here, is just like a sound card. Uh, so the sound card uh, is a board, just like the HRF, that you have inside your computers. And uh, the sound card allows you, it's basically an interface between the digital world of bits, zero and ones, and the analog world of uh, electrical uh, frequencies that corresponds to audio signals, okay? So your software is uh, sending uh, bits, uh, to your sound card, and then the sound card is transforming these bits to uh, an electrical signal that is then uh, uh, transformed to an audio signal by a speaker. Or inversely, um, some device like a microphone is sending some electrical signal to uh, the sound card, and the sound card transforms that to, to uh, zero and ones, so bits. Everything at the level of bits is handled by software, okay? Uh, you have uh, your MP3 player, you have a VLC to see movies and all this kind of stuff. And the sound card transforms basically these uh, bits, uh, bits to uh, analog stuff, so uh, electrical signals. And it is bidirectional in the sense that you can have either outputs uh, using speakers or inputs using microphones. So the HRF is really the same thing, except that the frequencies are not uh, being input or output to the HRF, are not uh, in the zero to 20 kilohertz range. These are the frequencies of audio, uh, human at least, uh, audible audio. It instead work with frequency from one megahertz to six gigahertz, which are the frequencies used for uh, telecommunications. And another difference is that the antenna, unlike uh, speakers and microphone, which are two different type of devices, works both for input and for output. So it both receives or it can both output uh, depending on the fit configuration, okay? So this is the HRF. Without, it's just a sound card and without a computer it cannot do anything. And when connected to the, the computer, it can do whatever the software is able to do. So you need to have good software in order to use properly the, the HRF. Now the PortaPak, what is it? The PortaPak is really a very small computer. So it's a computer with its own uh, display. It has uh, some uh, buttons here to click and move around. It has uh, some uh, audio interface. So this is uh, the plug for um, uh, an audio jack, the same of kind you have in your smartphones. And that's it basically. And then it uses these pins to communicate uh, via hardware to the HRF. Okay, so once we connect uh, in this simple way, just uh, like an Arduino board, uh, just putting on top of the HRF, uh, the board here, uh, the porta pack uh, board. Now it's like having directly a computer, which is the porta pack, communicating with uh, the sound card, which is the HRF. Okay, so we don't need anymore an external computer because this is uh, itself a computer 
it's very basic, it's very slow, it's very minimal, it, is, uh, it has very little functionalities, but it is a computer, conceptually speaking, okay? So this is uh, really the main difference. Uh, um, now I just want to illustrate a couple of uh, the functionalities that are uh, concretely available using this porta pack. So as you can see, let me zoom uh, a little bit uh, uh, here. I hope the zoom work, uh, works good enough. So let me see if I can fix this. So you can see now I'm, uh, uh, the, the display starts with this Havoc uh, image. So the Havoc is just uh, the firmware. So like a computer can have many operating systems, uh, such as Linux, Windows, etc. Here you can have many firmwares, and Davoc is the, probably the most popular. So here, if I go to settings, uh, UI, you see I can, can configure daytime, many things. I can disable these annoying things that uh, turn off the, um, the display after five seconds of, uh, uh, you see, it just happens uh, after five seconds of not, uh, not having interaction. So now, it will not turn off uh, anymore. So uh, now I just want to show you the very uh, essential functionalities of this uh, porta pack. One is, of course, uh, uh, to receive something, and the other is to transmit something. So the first two uh, elements that we have here. So let me go to receive first. And here we have many types of receive. We can receive a plane information sent by planes uh, you know, when they fly. We can really have uh, many options, but really the simplest one is audio, there. So uh, if I go to audio, now the, uh, I don't know if you can visualize, but now there, so let me see if I can further zoom, or uh, let me see if you can see. Yeah, you, now you should be able to see there that now the, um, the porta pack is tuned to 100 megahertz. So let me just change that. I'm going to, uh, to put a frequency, which is uh, uh, set now in my Baofeng radio. It's uh, 145.0975 megahertz. So I've done that. And uh, by the way, as you see, the, the porta pack here is a touchscreen interface. I have to say it's not the best uh, um, touchscreen in the world. It's nothing like your iPhone, but still it works, okay? So now let me zoom out a little bit. Here I have my Baofeng. Uh, so if you don't know what this, this thing is, it's a very cheap uh, walkie-talkie that uh, comes from China, of course, and it costs only 25 euros. So this is really incredible value for the money. It's by no means the best uh, walkie-talkie in the world, but it's by far, I think, the best you can buy for 25 euros. Uh, it's really good, and uh, I suggest you buy one if nothing else, for experimenting with uh, your RACRF, just like I'm doing at the moment. Anyway, so let me zoom uh, in again a little bit. So here at the moment we have the Spectrum uh, waterfall. And if I click uh, the Transmit button on my RACRF, uh, on my um, Baofeng, you will see that I'm receiving the signal. So um, I'm receiving the signal, and in fact, uh, let me click it uh, once again, ju just one sec. Okay, you see that the signal is actually being outputted by Myofang for a few seconds, even if I click just one second. And we could observe this uh, using the, the porta pack. The fact is that uh, the Baofang emits at uh, the beginning of every um, transmission some additional information, some extra bits and data. It's basically that these are used on all walkie talkies. It's basically a way to select the conversation that you like. Uh, and filter out some others. Nothing too important. It's also used to configure repeaters and these type of things. Okay, so this was ba the basic uh, receive uh, mode. Oh, by the way, you didn't hear anything, of course, because I didn't plug uh, a speaker to the output port, I mean, to the um, audio port of the porta pack. Well, let me just do that now. Now I have attached uh, this uh, smartphone, uh, earphones plus microphone. And uh, what I want to use is this microphone, okay? So this uh, microphone will be used now to transmit uh, using, uh, so let me leave the microphone here. Uh, so let me zoom again. So here we have again, uh, let me see if we can view things properly. Unfortunately, this webcam has serious problems with um, focus, but okay, let's see if I can show you this okay so we go to transmitter okay so let me click uh, transmitter 
transmitter and as you can see here we have many types of uh, transmissions I don't know if you can see actually so let me see uh, you can receive uh, transmissions uh, you can send sorry transmission well this is fun it's called a uh, jammer we will uh, talk about it uh, later but uh, then you have a uh, microphone so this is uh, the the simplest uh, the simplest one so let me try it so now the microphone is picking up you cannot see probably because of some lighting problem but anyway here is clearly visible um, with uh, human eyes let's say that uh, here this is uh, picking up uh, my voice from uh, from um, from this mic okay which is plugged in uh, to the porta pack and um, so um, it is currently set uh, to transmit at uh, 100 and uh, let me see if I can show it to you 145 uh, let's see if it can focus anyway it is currently set to to transmit at the proper frequency where this baofeng is uh, i can set the bandwidth so let me try with six and then uh, to transmit you just click here and you speak on the microphone so hello 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 now you should uh, be able to hear me so um the audio was a bit terrible. First, the mic is not of very good quality. Second, there is a distortion because the two antennas are so close together. Third, this antenna here is vertical. Uh, and uh, this is uh, horizontal at the moment. Fourth, uh, we are inside an apartment. So this is a really a terrible setup. But still, you could hear that with the porta pack, we managed to transmit uh, to the Baofeng. The fact is that the porta pack, of course, can transmit on arbitrary frequencies, not just these uh, 145 megahertz that we have um, currently at the moment here. Right, so you can see this was uh, where the, the radio was set. This can uh, transmit from 1 uh, megahertz to 6 gigahertz, and that's why the Acraf is so amazing. But okay, there are other types of transmissions, so for example, that don't require even a, a microphone. So let me just remove this so it's out of the way. Um, this uh, uh, option that you have just uh, after microphone, so let's see if the, it's called Morse code. Okay, so in the Morse code is very simple. You set up that you want to transmit, uh, for example, using a frequency modulation here, and you set a message. So for example, currently the message being set is porta pack. So I will just uh, leave it uh, that message. Uh, the frequency is set already to that of the Baofeng, so let's see our, the result. So you could see here very clearly uh, a Morse code being transmitted and uh, the meaning of that message was of course porta pack. So this is a very good uh, CW uh, Morse code transmitter and I mean very handy, very simple to use even for those that do not know uh, Morse code. And also, of course, it can uh, transmit both uh, in FM mode, so it can be received by walkie-talkies, but also in M uh, AM mode, which is uh, the mode uh, used by, uh, you know, on the um, HF uh, bands of, uh, from, uh, by ham radio operators, so from 1 megahertz to 30 megahertz, more or less. And then uh, I, have, I want to show you this uh, last functionality, this uh, jammer. There are really so many functionality, I cannot show you all of them, okay? But... Uh, uh, let's see this jammer. This is uh, just a completely illegal thing, basically. To, it emits noise to disturb all the signals. So to explain how this works, uh, let me show you first. So this Baofeng radio uh, can also be used as a, uh, you know, standard FM receiver. Now it's currently set on the, on the, let's see, the 95.7 megahertz band, okay? So here I'm going to write, uh, let me zoom again, uh, 95.7, 95.7, and uh, here I can decide how much band I want to uh, disturb, so I, I will say 0 0.3 megahertz, so 300 kilohertz, so this should uh, basically cancel out all this uh, FM band. So let's see what happens when I, I click start. Oh, I have to activate uh, the output first and then let me click start. So you see now the signal from the FM band is being completely um, overwhelmed by the noise from the porta pack.
So let me st stop that because <laughs> it's, uh, it's illegal. Don't do that. But of course, this is out outputting at uh, the moment uh, 10 milliwatt of power. I'm inside the, my flat and so this was just jamming for five seconds. So I don't think I uh, really annoyed any anybody, but just don't do that because it's illegal. Anyway, so these are just some of the functionalities of uh, the Porta Pack. I hope uh, I managed to just illustrate what this thing can do. I also showed you in one of my previous videos uh, the Porta Pack as a signal generator, how this can be used as a signal generator for test equipment. I use uh, it to connect to my uh, oscilloscope and spectrum analyzer. It can be quite useful. So let me come to the conclusion. Uh, and I want to answer the last question, which was, should I buy the AKRF or the AKRF Plus Porta Pack? Well, of course, it depends on what you want to do. But um, my opinion is the following. The AKRF, just the basic AKRF with its metal enclosure, cost 100 euros. And in my opinion, it is money extremely well spent. So the value per money ratio is super high. So with the AKRF, you can do many experiments. If, you, if you're a hobbyist, it's really a very interesting device to have. It's basically, as a sound card, if you are uh, you know, an audiophile, if you're interested in audio, you need a sound card, right? And the AKRF is your sound card for radio, that's it. Instead, the Porta Pack, uh, is, uh, is something different. It's something that costs 50 euros on top of the AKRF and is mostly to have fun and, uh, you know, to use the, uh, the AKRF in a convenient way, but it's not really essential, okay? So if you just have uh, a very limited budget, I would just buy the AKRF and use software on your computer to, to use uh, the AKRF. Instead, if you can spare the extra 50 euros, I think the Porta Pack can be a lot of fun. But really, the, the amazing good deal is the AKRF, it's not the Porta Pack. That's just my personal opinion. Of course, I bought the Porta Pack and I'm happy with it. So don't get me wrong, I'm very happy this project exists and I hope they keep improving it. But uh, yeah, that's my opinion. The AKRF is really, really good value for the money. The Porta Pack is more like a toy just to have uh, some fun with the AKRF. And so this is it uh, for this video, which was made just to answer one of the questions of uh, some of my viewers. And I hope you found it useful. And uh, if you have other questions, uh, please uh, feel free to ask uh, in the comment section below. And uh, feel, free, feel free, of course, to subscribe to this channel if you like it. Okay, that's all. Bye-bye. Uh,